I have primed the fuel line with four cc's of Coleman fuel and one half cc of air as a chaser and now I will put in one cc of denatured alcohol into the priming pad which is the typical startup scenario. Start this up. As I've noticed uh, previously, it um, it appears to be the case that shortly, as you can see, these flames shortly after the priming has started, because there's some fuel in the fuel line, this kind of a, of a flame starts up, which actually assists in preheating this. And shortly after this. There's some kind of a minor burning indication, as you can hear. So I take advantage of that by starting up the stove. And I let it run for a little bit here just to make sure that the generator is heated up. Or Coleman fuel. And then I remove the lid. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up this so that it is suitable for supporting a pot, which is what I'm going to put here. This has got some water in it. And the purpose of this is to allow for the the generator to both heat up while this Coleman fuel is going through and at the same time use the fuel to provide some useful energy. Once the Coleman fuel runs out, which takes about two minutes or so, there will be a transition stage for the kerosene and the pot serves to buffer some of the yellow flames that will come. They're, they spurt out at intervals. And um, so this helps to kind of shield, uh, as you can see, this is already beginning to start up where you see these uh, minor degree of yellow flames as the, col as the Coleman fuel is being exhausted. And now we have the kerosene entering into this. This goes on for about a minute before the generator is hot enough to support the kerosene. But at least during this time there is some useful uh, work being done because of the uh, heating up of the water. There are about 50 pumps in this uh, fuel bottle and about 60, 70 or so milliliters of fuel, maybe a little less. I will check the bottom of the pot after this is over to uh, to see what the um, this minor bit of flame has left. I'm now opening up the uh, control valve all the way. The water is already getting to the point where it's almost getting ready to boil. I will let the uh, flame burn with the kerosene until the water boils. And then I will put the bottle into a shutdown position to drain the line. And that will be the end of this demonstration.
Although you can't, I don't think, see this in the video. And there's a little bit of the water level, I think, showing on the uh, monitor. But it's getting close to boiling. I know nobody wants to watch a pot boil. It's not very exciting. But as this represents a full start to stop sequence, I thought this was going to be a little bit more interesting than just watching water boil. Fortunately, I don't have too much water in here. I think I have about, uh, somewhere between, I guess, 500 and 750 milliliters of uh, water. And this is very much typical of what you would expect in a real scenario where you're backpacking, you want to start up a meal, this is exactly what you would do. Uh, you, you get your syringes ready, one with alcohol, one with the Coleman fuel or gasoline. You prime the line with this adapter. You connect the fuel bottle. You put down the alcohol priming. You start it. You have the chimney on already. The Coleman fuel begins to start burning. You put your pot on that you want to start heating up water with or whatever. We're now getting a boil here in the water. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the shutdown mode. Now, ideally, you want to go ahead and do this shutdown prior to, let's say, if this is your, your uh, what you're looking for is boiling water. Because the kerosene will continue to burn for about another minute and a half, two minutes, uh, as you go into the shutdown, it's better to anticipate that you're getting close to, let's say, your end point for cooking, if this is the case of like, boiling water, and start your shutdown so that by the time the water starts boiling, you have emptied the line, so you don't have, again, wasted fuel. As I've indicated with this uh, priming the line, this line from start to end is about four and a half cc's. Now that doesn't sound like much, that's a teaspoon. But if you're talking about being away from a fuel source, and four and a half cc's represents roughly two minutes of actual stove operation, which is enough to start water boiling in many instances, it becomes more than just a simple matter of you're holding a bottle here waiting for the uh, fuel to run out. It represents a waste of energy. I have just emptied out the uh, boiling water so that we can inspect the bottom of the pot for any soot buildup. And this is what the bottom looks like. Let's see how bad this soot is. There's some. It's not terrible, and it would be easy enough, I think, to wipe off with just uh, a paper towel. But given that this is, um, in effect, using up the fuel for priming to also um, serve a useful function such as uh, cooking, this a little bit of soot I don't think is a whole lot to cry about. It is a minor inconvenience. This transition is going to occur no matter what. I've tried this using the chimney where I don't really remove it until the kerosene is burning. It's still again two and a half, three and a half minutes of wasted fuel from the Coleman fuel plus some residual from the kerosene as it's beginning to 
heat up the generator. To me, that seems like a waste. Um, we're talking by the time the generator is fully up to speed for the kerosene, from start to finish, we're talking about somewhere between three to four and a half minutes where the burner is actually running. And that is enough, especially with the shutdown taking another one and a half to two minutes. You're talking about almost six minutes of burn time. That would be enough to basically boil the water. This requires a little pre-planning, but not a lot. And it has a little bit of residue on the bottom, but again, not a lot. You'd have to ask yourself whether or not that little bit of inconvenience uh, is enough to justify some of the other uh, maneuvers that you have to go through with this. The chimney, the extra syringe, the, um, the Lindel lure adapter, some of this other stuff. There's always the option of starting your stove up according to the manufacturer's recommendations. So you can always fall back on that if you would like. And as is usually the case, this will begin to start um, showing some activity shortly because there's Coleman fuel in the line, four cc's worth. You can see some of the flames that are coming out already, which is usually a good indicator that you've got fuel in the line, some of it getting near the generator. What has happened in the past is that this will start to hear some early gener uh, burner activity as you can hear right now. And I typically use that to start up the stove. As you can hear. Now this is the Coleman fuel. There's a little bit of residual kerosene from the previous test. But for the most part, this is Coleman fuel that's going through the line. It takes about two and a half to three minutes for this to run through. But as I did in the last test, I will, once the Coleman fuel has caught on, which doesn't take long, I will remove the chimney and get the legs spread apart so that I can now put a pot of water on here. Ah, there's the yellow flame, okay. So this is, this is what I was talking about. It takes a while again for the Coleman fuel to go through. And when I did the test last time, uh, there was a little bit of a soot buildup as a result of this uh, yellow flame hitting the bottom of the pot. This again goes on for about a minute until the kerosene uh, has provided enough heat to the generator to sustain adequate combustion for the kerosene. In the meantime, the water is getting heated up. And uh, the idea here is to get as much energy out of the fuel as possible rather than just letting it heat up the generator. This is not a very clean paper towel, but I think it'll be obvious as this gets wiped off. It'll show you how much soot buildup has occurred as a result of this transition stage. You can see it there on the... This is the price you pay for having this kind of technique. It is offset, I'd like to believe, by virtue of the fact that you have a more efficient use of fuel than would be the case otherwise. So you at least have the opportunity of making a decision. You can wipe off the soot and save your fuel, or you can warm up the generator with the fuel, wait several minutes, and then have a clean pot. So you can at least make a decision as to which is more important to you, your fuel or your paper towel.